Good morning on this somewhat overcast August day. I'm at Slimbridge Wetlands here in the UK and I'm doing something somewhat fun today. Possibly I'm going to try and shoot wildlife on the Nikon F801. And yes, I had to check the model number because I haven't shot with this in 20 years. This was my dad's film camera in the 90s. It's quite an advanced film camera. It does have a drive mode and I don't entirely remember how to load it but I will be trying it with Fujifilm C200 and I'm going to try and photograph wildlife because this will attach to my Sigma 150 to 600. It won't autofocus, but it's probably for the best because the autofocus lenses that I have tried for this camera uh, sound like a tank running. So it's going to be interesting. Probably going to have 36 blurry photographs. Let's go find out. Last time I tried to use this Fujifilm, I loaded it wrong. So, let's find out. Don't you just have to rest over here on this camera? And that's what all it needs. Okay. See if it will work. It does seem to be loaded. Okay, so it turns out you can only use it in P or S mode, which might be a problem, but I have at least got it to its largest aperture, so let's go find out. This is going to be interesting. Let's start using and just go and find some big birds and less uh, strimmer. Uh, yes, so this didn't go entirely to plan, as I think you can probably already tell. However, there are at least a couple of interesting photos dotted in amongst the rest of this video, so let's continue. Not sure that is going to come out. <laughs> See, ergonomically this lens is a bit awkward with this camera. Um, it has not enough weight in the camera body really to offset the weight of this lens like uh, the Z9 does. Though it doesn't have the FTZ adapter so you know it's slightly shorter in terms of the weight balance. It's not quite as far forward now but uh, there's a there's a jackdaw having a bath. Yeah, he's giving up. That's a shame. And I'll be apprehensive wearing shorts around the load of geese. Oh, it's a signet. <laughs> This is probably all going to be underexposed. I think if I was a psychopath who uh, 
wanted to film wildlife, do film wildlife photography full time, I would get a lighter lens. Maybe the contemporary Sigma, or you know, one that actually is fully compatible with this camera because it's lacking an aperture ring. I can't um, actually use any aperture controls. I can only shoot in shutter priority mode, which is fine. It's an interesting little bird. Is it a baby something? Lots of Quentin Blake stuff here at the moment. Quentin Blake being the person who illustrates a lot of Roald Dahl books. He's got a, an ongoing sort of partnership with the WWT. Uh, in here. The last time I went in here, I did get attacked by a goose. Oh, you guys look suspicious. Lift, latch, then push gate. Yeah. So, how much do you trust these guys? It's alright. There we go. Success! This time they didn't go for machines. Oh, there is a Berwick Swan there. photo of the boat. Oh, there's a hide. Let's see if there's anything in there. My chances of hand holding at one five hundredth of a second on this are slim. Mm. It kind of feels like a sort of prison, actually. Okay, I'll go this way. Yeah. Smell my sort of thing. I'm going to throw it there. Right. Oh, lovely. Lots of bees. I'm going to get a bee photo with the uh, film camera. Let's give it a go. It's 
be an exceptionally thin depth of field. Maybe. Let's see. Ah, I think there are some egrets over here. Let's see if we can get a photo of an egret. Dramatic music. Just eating from the tree, let's see what I'm doing. So you just press that and that. Nice. Living in the future. Wow. So yes, not a huge success. I do like the flamingo photos. I think the colors are really interesting and I'm going to see if I can come up with a Lightroom profile for the Z9 that would kind of emulate those colors because I think they're really interesting and uh, give a really nice effect to those images. However, there are a few problems with the experiment. One that I was using film that was too slow, really 200 ISO is just not fast enough for the shutter speeds I was using, even in bright sunlight. That is another problem though, I was probably shooting at too fast a shutter speed a lot of the time, which is why so many of them are underexposed. Didn't help that it was changeable weather, it was overcast, then it was sunny. So that's why the later photos came out a bit better. I was also very much struggling to hold the weight of the camera because the Sigma lens is very front heavy with a battery grip fitted camera like the Z9 it shifts the weight back and it's just heavy but it's balanced with a lightweight film body on the end of it it's extremely front heavy and by the end of the hour or so i was shooting my left arm was really feeling the impact of that lens so that was a reasonable downside to it there are some things i would like to change in the future i would like to shoot with a faster film, though there is a bit of an issue with this because that was Fujifilm. And Fujifilm colors tended to be quite green. They are very favored amongst nature photographers for that reason. They had a really good green hue to them. Whereas Kodak tend to favor a sort of a magenta hue, which is better for skin tones and architecture. But for nature, it makes things look weird like it does make them look weird they look like the underexposed photos on the fujifilm so 
that's a bit of a problem because Kodak film is quite readily available. You can get 800 ISO Portra, for example. It's very expensive, but you can get it. Fujifilm have suspended the sale of nearly all of their film stocks. Not to worry about trying to get an 800 ISO, you can't even get 400. I don't think you can even get 100 here. The only film stock I can get from Fuji in the UK is C200, and it's really expensive. So this leaves me with a bit of a conundrum of sorts if I wanted to try this again. I'd, I would like to revisit this experiment and see if I can get better photos the second time around. Number one, I need a faster film stock. I do have a roll of Portra 800. I also have a roll of uh, Lomography 800. I don't know what the colour tint of that film will be, so I might try that one. It'll be interesting. I know what the Portra will look like. I don't know what that will look like. Something else I would quite like to try is a period corrector lens for the Nikon F801 because the Sigma is a bit awkward with it. They do exist, you can buy them on places like MPB, but I may save it for any potential sponsorship offer from people like MPB because I don't really want to add a huge and heavy 500mm prime lens from the 90s to my already extremely junk-filled office, as you can probably tell from the background of this shot. But in any case, thank you very much for watching. If you yourself ever did film wildlife photography, and I'm sure there's a few of you out there, please do let me know any suggestions or your own thoughts on it down in the comments below. I'd be really interested to know. I did a little bit of it myself when I was younger, but I was sort of at that threshold where digital was starting to take off, and so that became my thing much quicker. It seems like it could be really rewarding, albeit very expensive, I think.